You can now extract fonts, color themes, and vector shapes from images within InDesign using Capture. Join me to find out more about this and all the other new features of the 2022 release. With Capture in InDesign, now it is easy to extract fonts from images and also a couple of additional things like color palettes. First of all, where can you find this option? So whenever you have an image selected, you can either use your CC libraries panel and click on the plus sign and choose extract from image or right click on an image and choose extract from an image. Or you can also go to the object menu and you will find the option there as well. Now I'm going to choose first type, but as you will see, it will open up a separate dialog box. And within that, we can still switch between the three options I mentioned before. But starting first with recognizing text in images, I'm going to move this bounding box and adjust it so it fits onto the text in this logo. I'm going to choose find similar fonts. And this is going to search on Adobe fonts. So it found 20 similar ones. And as you can see, it tried to use the same text as well that it recognized in the image. Now, of course, we can change this, adjusting the sample text here on the top. But also we can choose these other presets like the full alphabet or the numbers and special characters and so on and so forth. Now, when you see a font that you like, you can further edit it before saving it. So if I click on edit here, we can still see the preview text. But more importantly, we can adjust the text size, the leading, which is the spacing between the lines and the spacing between the characters, which is tracking. And we can also assign these additional formatting options like underline and so on and so forth. But once you are ready, you can save this as a character style or as a paragraph style into your CC libraries. Now, unfortunately, there's no option to save directly into the document. And there is also no option to select which CC library you want to save it into. So before using this option, first, you have to make sure you navigate to that CC library you wish to work with. In this case, I already have that open because while this dialog box is open, we won't be able to navigate through the CC libraries. So it is not really ideal at the moment and hopefully they will refine this. But once I choose save to CC libraries, we'll see it showing up as a character style. And just to try it out, I'm going to also save it as a paragraph style. Now let's just jump back to the image and see what else we can save from it. So we can save it as a shape, which is basically like tracing in Illustrator. We have first of all the detail option, which is like the threshold where we can adjust how much of the bright and dark details are going to be captured. And we can even invert the information. So we can use the opposite of the original tonal values. And we can also choose to smooth the result on save. And it's quite cool that we even have a little eraser with which we can quickly delete details that we don't need. And there is even a brush size for the eraser so we can make it smaller. And let's just say I want to remove a few of these small specks here. Maybe make it even smaller and then I can just remove those, remove some here on the right. And then if I choose again, save to CC libraries, it's going to be added there as a vector shape that we can start using in any of the Adobe applications. And finally, color themes is quickly going to generate a palette made up of five colors. And we can even decide on the color mood, whether we want this to be colorful or a bit more bright. And we can see immediately how we now adjusted and picked one of those brightest, almost white colors from the image. We can also choose to have a more darker palette, deep or muted. And of course, we can individually move these colors around and adjust what we wish to sample. And instead of saving the color palette, if we want to just quickly copy one of the color values, we can just click on this icon here on the right, which will have it ready on the pasteboard and we can use it in any of the Adobe applications. But if I choose save to CC libraries, this theme is going to be added and ready to use from the CC library. Now I wanted to test and challenge a bit the font recognition feature within Capture. So I have two additional examples here. Let me just right click and choose extract from image type. And I really like the title in this case. So what happens if we just select the whole 
text here and choose find similar fonts. As you can see, it creates a mess because it doesn't recognize the text correctly. But maybe if we just reduce down to New York, even though there's a little bit of an overlap because of that very tight leading we have here, this might actually work better. And we can always refresh the results by clicking on this little icon here on the right. And yeah, as I expected, it worked much better now. We can just remove this little apostrophe and see that the second option is actually quite close to the original without all the flourishes that we have in that font. And once again, when I want to save this, I just have to decide what type of style I want to use it as. And I'm going to stick to paragraph style, save to CC libraries, and there it is. I also would prefer to be able to give a name to my styles before saving them. Again, that's an option that's currently missing. But let me just show you one additional example. Here in this case, the text is slightly on an angle that I would like to turn into a font. So when I go into extract from image, i show you what happens if I just highlight this area here. Once again, there's a little bit of an overlap with the smaller text there, but let's see if it can recognize this text. Also, there's actually quite low contrast here, but still it worked quite well, even though the sample text is not correct. The font is actually, I think, is a perfect match to the original that was used in this design. So I can just quickly fix this text here and edit this to have a little bit more tracking. And by the way, since it recognized that this is the Modesto typeface, we can obviously choose any of the other styles from it as well. And we can check how these other options look like the open regular, which looks very different, but still similar to the original font that we captured. But if I want, I can go back to the original that was selected, called text light, and then again, save it into my library. Another option that was added, you can find under the preferences, is called user interface scaling. And this is particularly useful if you're working on a large screen with very high resolution, because here you will be able to adjust now how large things will look. And depending on how high your resolution, you might have actually more options than just the two extremes that I'm showing you right here. And since I would have to restart InDesign to be able to show you the changes, I am going to show you three screenshots. So here on a very high resolution retina display, I captured the original user interface size, which as you can see, would be very hard to work with. Everything is tiny. The pages are really small, the tools as well, and even the menu. But once I increase the scaling, it starts to look already much better. And then we can go all the way to the other extreme when the interface starts to take over the whole working area. But I find this really useful that we can adjust and refine how the interface should fit to the resolution that we are working with. Additionally to the sizing slider, you also have an option to scale the cursor proportionately to the resolution you are working with. And another option that we had previously only in Illustrator now is also available here in InDesign that the anchor points, handles and bounding boxes can also be increased and decreased in size. Another interesting change that happened in InDesign is actually a very subtle one, and you might not even notice this, and it is actually not a new feature. It is a terminology that has changed. Instead of master pages, now we have parent pages. And this is an attempt from Adobe to be more inclusive, not using any terms that some users might find unwelcome or hurtful. So remember, master pages are now parent pages. And of course, this will show everywhere within the user interface. So we will see override all parent pages, apply parent to pages, and so on and so forth. There is also a small feature that was added to the keyboard shortcuts options. Here, now we can quickly import and use Adobe Illustrator shortcuts within InDesign. And also the same goes for Photoshop shortcuts. So if you click on either of these icons, you quickly change to a set that is aligned to the shortcuts that you're used to working with these other applications. And this might be useful, but in case you already customize your shortcuts in InDesign, you probably wouldn't want to use these. 
And there's one additional option which is almost like a preview still in beta. It's called Copy Editor and it is something that's very similar to Story Editor. I guess they would like to introduce a bit more updated and refined version of that. So just for those who are not familiar with the Story Editor, I'm going to open it up quickly. It's a separate window that opens up where it is usually easier to work with copy and it would even reveal text that's currently overset and not visible within the text frame and the copy editor is very similar and currently the only main difference that I can see is that the text is rendered in a different font but besides that I can't really see any improvements and reason for me to switch to this new feature but I hope they will refine this since this is still in a beta and maybe there will be some additional options here that will make this a better format to work with copy in InDesign. Thanks a lot for watching, like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.